Hi, this is Ryan from Better Tattooing. Today we're gonna to be going over some more positioning basics and talking about the shins. All right. Okay, now that that's over, the shins, the glorious shins. Where you have some clients who can sit and just like take it like monsters and other people scream their guts out. <laughs> Shins are not the most painful spot on the body. Everyone usually asks like, how bad is this gonna hurt? And I usually will bring up like one of three things, right? Like one, would you rather have your shin or your armpit tattooed or behind your knee or between your fingers? The shins aren't that bad, right? It's kind of a tattoo or joke. It's really great humor. I apologize. Anyways, if you're getting, it's, I'm not making fun of people's pain. I kind of am. I mean, it's in my job, right? To be a bit amused when people start making weird noises because you're doing what they asked you to do and they're paying you for it because it seems a bit ironic. But anyway, shins are horrible to deal with. Um, the topography on them, especially if somebody is relatively thin, is difficult to work with, right? Because it can be so narrow that it's like hard to get a grip on anything, right? If you're trying to do this big wrapping design that's going around it, you wanna be able to like make sure the person's rolling back and forth enough to keep that tattoo pointed at the ceiling. So what's the way that we shouldn't do this? More often than not, people will take a bed table, tassel chair, whatever, right? And they like have the person flat out. And I'll use this as well because, I mean, I love massage tables, but massage tables for shins, if you don't know what you're doing, is just really bad, right? They'll have someone laid out, right? And then the tattooer is working over here and they just like work on the shin. The shin is up, it's kind of good. Bad thing about this is, is because you're between like multiple joints when you're doing this, right? You can influence the hip, the knee, and the ankle on this. There's a tendency for that leg to roll a lot when you're working on it. So you've got to put a lot of effort to holding that down. When you're holding it down straight to make sure it doesn't move, you can't really focus on your stretches effectively. And you are also trying to make sure that that person is gonna be kicking you in the face, right? It's not a good position. You're usually gonna be bent over a little bit further. Your back's gonna get tired. It's just not very effective. So how can we fix the massage table thing? Well, what we do is we use it as well. And we're just gonna have our person sit on the edge of it. We have our massage table here, right? Whatever this bar is, boink, okay. And somebody's sitting here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get an armrest. Uh-huh, we're gonna have our person just put their foot right off of it, right? They can sit there, we'll give them a pillow to hug onto so they can just like, you know, grab onto it and just go to hell. Um, give her hell, I go to hell, that's really me. <laughs> <laughs> Not editing that out, because people should know how stupid I am sometimes. Um, and then all we're gonna do is just get our chair, right? We'll get our chair, sit on it, and uh, kind of work away. And normally I would say that you don't have your back bent like this. It doesn't work, right? Make sure that this is up high enough to ensure that you are able to sit up relatively straight and work, but also that this leg isn't gonna be fully locked out. If it's fully locked, when you're working on the shin, you're gonna be decreasing blood flow and the person is naturally gonna to wanna to lean back away from it, even if they're super flexible, right? So you're gonna to have to try to find a good balance between you and the person with that, um, that armrest behind their leg for you to work on. The good thing about this is, is usually when somebody is sitting up here and they do have a bit of a, a pillow, because they're not obstructed, their body is still somewhat mobile, you've stopped engaging the hips, they can't like end up rolling and moving their leg back and forth too much, especially if you keep your foot on the base of that armrest. Um, and you'll be able to better control that wiggle off the foot by keeping either the leg on the inside or the outside of you and hugging it almost with your elbow. You're gonna have to set pretty close with this one depending on who you're working with. And if you're right or left-handed, it can maybe be a little bit uncomfortable for some people. If it is, we have another way to do this. Uh, well, I think that that is actually the easiest and best way just because of how I sit, I like keep my back straight. I can just put someone up here, kind of like tuck my elbow on their foot right here and just work kind of at my right, put my stand right here so I don't have to move very far. Um, some people won't like it, right? They, you know, especially if you're not playing on the head. Anyways, what's another way we could do this? So. What we're gonna have to do is go back to the old fashioned way of having someone sit on the high chair. We'll do this, the high chair, right? Have someone sit on there. And what we're gonna do is just kick their foot right onto your lap. And you'll have your leg out, dental bib, cloth, whatever you want on top of it, right? And then you just sit here and work, right? Easy peasy. 
you get their foot right there, you can work. Bup, 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 bup. This will tire out your back a little bit more quickly than if you are, you know, actually using an, an armrest because you're gonna have to try to control that person when you're doing it, but it's gonna have the thing right in your face, you know, especially if, you, if it's not high enough off, for, off of your leg for you. Take something up, block their leg up like you would with something else, but just make sure that that leg isn't gonna be perpendicular with the ground and locked. You wanna have a bit of a bend on it when it's being worked on. That's it, shin's easy. You got another trick on this? Love to know. I've only done these three, I think. I've done a couple more, but they're just ridiculous and they don't ever work. Um, <laughs> actually, let's go over one more. We've got a few minutes here before I gotta go. Last one. <laughs> uh, yeah. Massage table, person sitting, hugging pillow, right? And But their leg is, only to where like the knee is here and the, it just kind of free dangles off of here so that the calf of the, on the back of the leg is actually resting against the edge of the table. This can work really well. Once again, your client's back up top, unless they're really holding that thing, they can end up kind of getting hunched up. It'll decrease their ability to breathe more effectively, uh, but it works pretty good. Um, I don't know, everything is just trying to get something against the back of that leg, right? Because when you place the stencil initially with them relaxed, right, on the ground, just standing like they're waiting in line at the grocery store or whatever, it's gonna have a lot of that warp. So when you have something pushing against, you always have to have a little bit of a tilt. And I mean, if you've done a shin tattoo, you know this, right? Like it can't just be flat against it, but as soon as you end up twisting it a little bit from one side to the other, you lose that balance of the, the tib and fib, right? And the leg of giving it enough support that you can accurately stretch or even manipulate the skin when you're working on it. So when you roll it, the tendency is it wants to roll a little bit more. Maybe it pulls this stuff uh, on the skin or the, the stencil a little bit more one way. And if it's really highly detailed, it's hard to keep track of all those lines, right? So. This, I don't know, I like the armrest the best because I can just like kind of tilt someone's body about like, you know, five to 10 degrees off of their center line, just rest it there, rest my one hand, I'm right-handed, dominant, right? I'll rest my one hand on there and I can get a nice even stretch for about three quarter of that tattoo across the top of the shin bone. It's just easier that way for me. But that's it, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Uh, like, subscribe, go to the website. Um, check our weekly check-in videos, bi-weekly check-in videos. I don't know how often we're doing that. But we're going to be doing it more often. Uh, and let us know what else we can do. Anyways, that's it for today. This is Ryan from Better Tattoo and signing off.